hopefully there's uh whew, hopefully there's no more talks about uh palms being sweaty like moms again. You had to bring it back up. <laughs> <laughs> that should sound nasty now. It does sound nasty, but yeah, definitely fuck that line up. It's all good, man. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, what's going on, y'all? South High Junction, it's your boy Sherm. Uh, Rondo is not here, nor is Long, but Anthony decided to make a cameo appearance today. Anthony, welcome back. What? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't want people to think that uh, that I reward good behavior, and if you disappear for three podcasts, I'll give you a whole episode by yourself. I'm but... so pissed that I missed you. <laughs> I'm it's sorry. <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. It's all good. We, we roll with it, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, we're able to get it knocked out in a timely manner, so... Welcome back. I'm sure everybody missed you. I'm I'm gonna try to have a better track record. Right <laughs> I'm looking bad out here in these streets. I don't know. <laughs> nah, it's it's all good, man. It's all good. It's all good. It happens. So uh, we're here with episode uh 19, I think. Yeah, episode. I'm 19. lost, so you gotta know it. It's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> I'm keeping track. We're on episode 19 now, right. and 19 will be brought to you in 4K. So. For hey, the first time, uh, we actually did a tech refresh on all the uh, cameras. So now you have the capability to shoot in 4K. We don't have to worry about um, 1080p. We don't have to worry about the cameras overheating. We don't have to worry about a record time limit. None of that stuff. Completely so, worth it. Yeah, no, definitely worth the money. Definitely worth the upgrade. And we got these neat little flip screens so I can actually look and see myself in the screen. Super dope. And a lot yeah, of people I look gonna, ugly. Yeah, true. I do. <laughs> A lot of people are gonna watch the video and be like, "Yo, this isn't in 4K," and it, it is. It's recorded in 4K, but I'm going to render the videos in 1080p. Just not because, all y'all got 4K, right? Not everybody has 4K. Not everybody has a 4K screen to actually get the full resolution. Not everybody. Uh, it, it takes a while, you know. what I'm saying if you're not on Wi-Fi, it takes a while for the actual video to load up. So um, we're rendering it in 1080p. That way we can zoom in and out. You don't have to worry about any loss of uh, pix or pixelation or anything like that because it's taking 4,000 frames or 4K resolution and putting it in 1080p. It's basically compressing it. So mm -hmm. way more range of motion, way more clarity, all that stuff. So do yeah. um do iPhone 8 or 8 Pluses or whatever, do they mm -hmm. have 4K screens? Yeah, they have 4K screens and they can record in 4K as well. Same thing with the okay. iPhone X. Yeah, I hope stuff. so. Of course. Right. So yeah, those those phones all have 4K capabilities. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. Most phones do nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Even some cheaper some cheaper options too. Bro, iPhone is crazy. Like I was looking at um, like the recording options. Like I could record 1080p at 240 frames per second. I was like, yo. I see. That's a crazy slow motion. If you're trying to catch some, yeah. Like yo, <laughs> that's insane. 240 frames per second, bro. That's 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 impressive to say the least. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I was just looking at some of that stuff, but um, we'll get we'll get into the topics we're gonna talk about now. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh the situation that happened with uh well, I don't even want to call it a situation. Nah. Uh, basically, Dwayne Wade's son uh came out as as gay, um, eleven years old, and he was at the Pride Festival uh, last week, or was it this weekend or something like that? Something like that. He he was at the the Gay Pride Festival and you know his parents were supporting him. Gabriel Gabrielle Union was there. Um, oh, his, you should right. His brother was there and things like that. And then obviously, with that comes a lot of backlash. You know, because obviously people uh everybody and everybody business right. People don't don't agree with everything that people do, and you don't necessarily have to agree with it. But you know, what I'm saying you also you also don't have to speak on it if you don't agree on it. If you don't agree on it, yeah. then you just don't agree on it. You don't have to you don't have to bash people for their beliefs and, and whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? But it's always going to be out there. Somebody's going to have a problem with something you do, right? No, no matter what you facts. do, that's facts. And I can I can throw my phone across the couch and somebody's like, "Wow, this dude, <laughs> what's wrong with him?" Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why somebody, would you throw your phone? <laughs> basically, what I'm saying is somebody's always going to have an opinion, and it's going to be an opposite opinion. Yeah, of what you think is no, right. that's that's factual. But I mean, there's nothing you could do about it at the end of the day. Everybody's gonna feel how they want to feel about whatever. You know, we we talked about this last week with the Nipsey Hussle thing. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah, people, yeah. Some people think it's a conspiracy. Other people think that you know it's just the wrong place, wrong time, unfortunate event. You know, which you believe what you want. You know what I'm saying? But um, at the end of the day, we lost a good person. You know. So I was just watching his funeral too on BET at the yeah. when I was at the barber shop they had it on. Mm -hmm. uh, Snoop Dogg was on there. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. He had some cool jokes about it. It's it's cool. 
it's cool to see when somebody when somebody that's really because regardless if you see him far as like a simplistic way where you see okay he's in a gang he's a rapper he's probably negative talking about shooting people it's cool that when somebody that's so good as he is i mean i didn't know him personally but i've seen a lot of people talk about him in a positive manner definitely in his funeral they did right and um seeing his accolades like what he's done for his community for the people around him, everybody that he's helped out, they've had nothing but good things to say about him. Um, even when he was alive, you didn't hear too much negative stuff about him in general. It mostly was a positive vibe that he created. And then to see that the people that didn't know about him or didn't recognize what he was about or what he did, just to see all that actually unfold mm-hmm. and you start to find out the details and actually see how good a person was. It's sad that you have to find... A lot of people have to find out about all that good stuff um, after somebody dies and not right. while they're alive. But that's kind of how it is nowadays. Everybody's attracted attracted to negativity, and they're, they'll, that's more entertaining than seeing somebody, you know, build something in their community and actually put focus on that. So, right. No, that's, that's, that's facts. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't. Uh, a lot of people were focused on the rapper Nipsey Hussle, you know what I'm saying? They weren't, they didn't care about community service Nipsey Hussle. They didn't care about Nipsey Hussle that was promoting, you know, cultural enlightenment that was promoting, uh, you know, generational wealth, that was promoting buying back your hood and, and investing in your people. You know what I'm saying? They didn't focus on that. A lot of people didn't. There were mm-hmm. the people that knew about it, obviously, but all those things came to light once he passed, which made him much more prolific, you know what I'm saying? Made him much more iconic because he was legitimately trying to help people, you know what I'm saying? He was actually trying to do good for the community. And the way, yeah, he was in a gang, but he treated the gang how the gangs were originally supposed to be in the first place for protection, you know what I'm saying? To protect your people, yep. to put on for your people, and to provide for your people ultimately, which is what gangs initially were in the first place before they got perverted, you know, over time and you know, division happened and, and all that other stuff, you know, so. And, so. and some people don't know either is that even though he was in a gang, he wasn't in a gang. Like, gangs originally definitely, that culture in L.A. is, that's really where gang culture kind of grew up and uh, originated from. Like, you'll see a lot of OG stuff happen in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was about protecting your neighborhood, protecting your community, um, trying to help out. Like it never was about all the violence that it turned into. But one thing, some things that people don't know about Nipsey is that he's, he's done a lot to try to bring gangs together and to try to stop the violence. It's not, I mean, I, I get that it does happen in gangs. You see gang shootings, you see all that. And that's just like with any group of people there's going to be some outliers where they just don't get the message, but they're still a part of that group. So they're going to do the negative things. Right. Um, But like, say in a sense, if you saw a gang member and you heard he shot somebody, you would probably think something negative, like, oh, he's just killing another gang member. He's killing an innocent person. What if he was protecting somebody? Mm-hmm. What if somebody that wasn't even in a gang was bullying a kid or talking about shooting his house and the gang member heard that on the streets and was there to protect him or something like that. I mean, not everything, everything happens a different way. Like I said, there's outliers in gangs, but one thing Nipsey did was try to bring gangs together and stop the violence and trying to help the community, which he understood that's what originated from gangs and that's what they were about. So even if you even if you want to think of Black Panthers or something like that as a gang, they were about some of the, those concepts too of bringing the community, helping out the Black community, uh, trying to bring people right. together, trying to provide and help people that needed help. Ultimately, protecting Black people from at the time white people because that was the main yeah. oppressors at the time. That was the people that were trying to oppress a race because of the segregation, all those things. That's mm-hmm. why that. The Black Panther Party existed was protection of our own people to protect everybody, you know. So, yeah, um, that's that's really a lot of those things start off innocent, and then obviously, you know, outside entities start to push in, which cause them to have to retaliate and defend themselves. You know what I'm saying? 
So, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. Um, of course, you know, he rested now, had the funeral and all that stuff. So, uh, hopefully, people, you know, carry on his his mind state and you know make sure that his death wasn't in vain and carry on his principles and stuff like that. So, but um, back to the D Wade thing. Um, I think that mm-hmm. it's very important for people parents specifically to you know be in their kids life to make sure that their children are supported with whatever they decide to do you know whether that be sports music whatever if they come out as homosexual that what do you i mean there's not anything that you can do about that you know what i'm saying you can't mm-hmm. make them be straight you can't make them you know you're gonna disown them i mean at the end of the day you gave birth to that child, you know what I'm saying? That child yeah. either came out your nutsack or was carried in your womb for nine months, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's a piece of you, you know what I'm saying? And to, to disown them because of their life choice or who they choose to love, you know what I'm saying? That is it, it, shallow, man, you know what I'm saying? And a lot yeah. of people are shallow, you know, a lot of people, I mean, me personally, I would I want my child to be homosexual? No, I personally wouldn't, but if they were, I, there's nothing I can do about it. I wouldn't mind it. You know what I'm saying? I would have to adjust and I'd have to go with that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like anybody that, you know, hasn't had a gay child, you know, wouldn't really know what to do. I think it's a learning curve and I think it's an adjustment. You know what I'm saying? Because now everything you taught them from youth, you know, as far as like, you know, liking girls or playing with masculine toys or whatever the case may be and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Now those things come into question and now those things are different and now you have to change your whole entire approach and how you look at things, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, and I have, I have gay friends too, you know what I'm saying? Like I have a, a few f- uh, close friends that are, that are gay mm-hmm. and you know yep. what I'm saying? That's, it's a life choice, you know what I'm saying? That's what great they choose people. to do. And yeah, they're great. And they're some of the funniest people I've ever met too, you know yeah. what I'm saying? If you have your week, but yeah. um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I just don't think people should be so quick to judge and, and be so quick to, see, like, what is he supposed to do? Not support his son? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, he's, at the end of the day, he's being a good father. He's making sure his son's taken care of. He's making sure his son is doing what he has to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's kind of one of the important things as a parent. And take that with a grain of salt because I'm not a parent. I don't have kids. Um, yeah, me either. But, but regardless, it doesn't mean that I don't understand the concepts of parenthood or have some idea of what type of parent I want to be or kind of the key concepts you should have as a parent. Mm-hmm. Like far as a parent, I know for one thing, you're supposed to guide your child, you know? Right. So you're supposed to help guide them towards, you know, their success, not just a success, but their success, whatever they choose to do. And to make sure that they're positive and happy, you know, that they just live a good life and they have all the tools they need to live a good life. They're taken care of, you know, set a good example for them. Like, right. Like those are kind of key concepts of being a parent. And far as, uh, a child, what is it, 11 years old? Yeah. 11 deciding to be gay. Like that's, that's just some preference. Like, and it's like, like for me, like one of my favorite colors is gray, which may be a weird color for some people, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's certain cases. Like, I really like blue too. Like, right. it matters with what thing. But I like gray as well. I like gray. I like blue. Mm-hmm. And you know, I like red. Probably my second favorite or third favorite. Okay. So, but if you were to tell me, yo, that's that's not right. You should like pink or you should like yellow. Whatever. It's all just preference. Like, mm-hmm. you can't stop me from liking gray, blue, or red. That's just what I like. Those right. are the colors I chose to like, and I just naturally like it. I can't even talk myself out of them and be like, oh, now nah, I like this color. I just know that I like these colors when I see it. I mm-hmm. like the way they look. I like that shade. That's it. And I'm not saying is that being gay or you know bisexual or whatever is that simplistic, but in a sense, when your child makes a decision that, that's a preference. You right. know, that's something that they feel that's what they like, you know? So... I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, like for one thing too, it's like being gay doesn't that doesn't harm a human being. Like, right. there's nothing there's nothing bad about it. Only thing people try to make bad about being gay is that they don't like that. Like, they don't understand it. Like mm-hmm. for me, I don't understand it just because that's not my preference. Right. Like, if you liked pink, I wouldn't I wouldn't know why you like pink. That's just what you like. But you're I, not gonna berate somebody for it. Why? I right. mean, it wouldn't harm you. I think. 
I think for parents too, that parents have such a big deal with their their kids being gay is because they feel like they have to deal with it and they care mm-hmm. about what people are going to think about them for their kid being gay or like, I don't, I don't even get where, I mean, I do get a sense why there's some type of negative stigma, but there shouldn't be, mm-hmm. there shouldn't be at all. Like, I don't know. I mean, as it's good that they support their kid like they should. And everybody's going to have an opinion about it. They're going to be negative. But I mean, who cares? Right. Who exactly. Because at, at the end of the day, they're going to live their lives. At the end of the day, they got more money than the people that they hate and have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, regardless. I mean, it's, it's, it's really nothing. And then there's those people that are saying that, you know, as an 11-year-old, oh, who touched them to make them gay? They say, I was, Come on, bro. Like, you don't have to have some type of sexual encounter to to determine who you are attracted to. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because, I mean, even at the age of 11, I found out around that time that I liked women. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I actually got interested in women. I was like, you know what? I love you to death, toys, but I got to put y'all up. You know what I'm saying? I'll put y'all in the box, mm-hmm. pass them down to my little brother. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, went on to, you know, doing teenager things, you know, going outside, hanging out with friends, going to movies, yep. you know, Same started thing. pursuing women, you know what I'm saying, or girls at the time, I guess, because we were younger, but at, yeah. at the end of the day. I mean, maybe you were doing women, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, chill. Nah. At Yo, the your end, math teacher? What? Oh, <laughs> hey, I've never, I had, did, I've I've never a, had an attractive math teacher, ever. No, I've I never had, had a math teacher. teacher. I had I had an attractive teacher in, uh, like, third grade. I was young, <laughs> I always thought she was Terrible. cute in third grade. I think it was third grade. <laughs> but that, and that just goes to prove the point. You know what I'm saying? Like, people know what, like, you don't yeah, have I was to in be third grade. a teenager, a fully grown teenager. You don't have to be an adult to know who you are attracted to and what you're interested in. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. who who are they to say who this 11-year-old boy can be interested in? You know what I'm saying? So, mm, I, mean, that, yeah. I mean, people at the end of the day, like we said, they're going to have their own opinions. They're going to feel how they feel. But if your opinion does not line up with someone else's opinion, you should not berate them or chastise them because of that. You know what I'm saying? Now, there are certain cases where someone's opinion is clearly stupid. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, Mm -hmm. obviously you're tweaking. You know what I'm saying? But this, when it comes to somebody's preference, when you have an opinion on something that somebody else feels or or chooses to do, kind of irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's not your decision to be made. It doesn't matter what you think or how you feel about it. It's that person's decision ultimately at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, it's the, the most of the stuff that you see that's super negative about stuff like that, like Dwayne Wade's kid, um, like all that stuff is just, it's not logical or reasoning. Like they're not being reasonable. They're just trolling. Like, right. Or not even necessarily trolling. They may even like sincerely feel that way. But like, I think that's also something that's changing in society with social media. Everybody has an opinion Everybody feels like their opinion needs to be heard or they have to have an opinion on like celebrities lives or people's lives and right. what they post. Like it never used to be like that before social media. So now it's kind of changed the way people think mentally and they feel like so entitled that, you mm-hmm. know, that their opinion matters and that they should, you know, like they should feel a way about everything. Like there's some stuff that happens uh, that I see. Like, there's some events and stuff that happen, like, in ma- mainstream media that sometimes I don't have an opinion on, and I don't have to have an opinion on. Like, it's just like, I don't know how to feel about that. Mm-hmm. That's it. Or even if I did, and it was against whatever somebody felt, like, in this situation, like, somebody felt like, you know, that that kid should be gay at 11, or they shouldn't allow, or whatever, they, whatever they feel about it. Like, why does your opinion matter? Why does it hold any weight? And I feel like anybody that's on social media or something like that, and you have people commenting or whatever, somebody's not coming at you, <clears throat> even if they're against what you think or feel, whatever, if they're not coming at you with constructive criticism, like far as it's a safety reason for what you're doing or something like that, they're not being logical or reasonable. There's no point. Their opinion doesn't hold any weight. It right. shouldn't. No, shouldn't. that's that's facts, man. That's <clears throat> facts. So, I mean, that's just that's just that situation. I mean, yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't please everybody, man. At the Who end cares? of the day, yeah, no. Nah, at the end of the day, ultimately, it doesn't matter, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, people can call it liberal thinking all they want or it's whatever. Blasphemy. Yeah, I mean, people people <laughs> can say that it's liberal all they want, but uh, and that's a whole other discussion as far as politics is concerned because everybody yeah. wants to be divided in some way, shape, or form. Somebody that's wants exactly to believe something. You know what I'm saying? Like when yep. it comes to the political parties, 
I try not to because I feel like there's good points on both sides of the spectrum. I exactly. feel like liberals have a lot of good points. I feel like conservatives have a lot of good points. But obviously, there's extremes to both ends. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like it's possible to not be on the extreme end of each spectrum. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I think there is a middle ground. And honestly, I would be fine with the absolving of political parties and just have one political yeah. party. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, that's just like if you're creating a. I mean, I mean, this this is more extreme, but like if you're creating a group of people of black people and then a group of white people or one one group of people that thinks this way and another group of people that thinks this way. And these groups have these ideals mm -hmm. and like some some people nowadays are all like they're not all followers, but a lot of them follow. Not right. everybody knows how to be a leader or how to think for themselves or not care about like not everybody's influences them. Mm -hmm. And you know they gravitate f towards everything they see, like anything you see on social media or a celebrity doing. You're like, oh, that's cool. I want to do that, right? You know. <clears throat> so when you divide groups like that, you're already pinning them against each other. Like yeah. if you're a Democrat, this is how we think. Re Republican, this is how we think. You're liberal, right. this is how you think. You could, like you said, you can agree with both opinions. Right. Simple as that. But we don't have to get into all that. Nah, thing. nah. Politics is a whole <laughs> rabbit hole. I'm not trying to go down right now. Yeah. So we'll 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 switch on and, and talk about something that's maybe more appealing to everybody else. Uh, I mm -hmm. want to talk a little bit about technology though, because um, oh yeah, the nice. just the the development and the growth of technology and, and where it's gone from, like when we were younger. Like, so I was born in '94. You were born in what '95? '93. I mean, not '95. '93. Yeah, my mm -hmm. bad. You're down. good. Um, so yeah, so you're born in 93, I was born in 94. So we grew up on like Sega Genesis, PlayStation one, you Jordan. know, stuff like that. You said what? Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? Michael Nothing. Jordan? <laughs> Me and grow up on Michael Jordan, man. I did. I mean, I grew up when he was, when he was balling. 93? He, he wasn't balling crazy, though. You know what I'm saying? Like we, starting. Not, not to where we could remember it. No, yeah, yeah. Remember it wasn't it, like you know the people saying? that were growing up. Uh, as an adult watching yeah. it, yeah, different. Yeah. But I mean, just seeing how everything went, I mean, from dial up to what we have now as far as connectivity is concerned. I mean, bro, I remember having a track phone in like middle school. <laughs> I remember trying to text on that thing, man. Crazy. And it wasn't like, it wasn't these like HD screens or even now 4K screens or whatever, AMOLED panel screens or whatever. Right. It wasn't nothing like that. It was just like, just like black and white text like on my mm -hmm. track phone i remember having that right and then i remember the sidekick started coming out with the phones that was cool you started seeing screens spinning a keyboard the razor was my shit razor that's is that what you had yeah i had a razor a little flip phone the flip joint yeah. i remember that it was like mad slim and yep. sleek yeah yeah i had i had a razor man that i'm upgraded <laughs> well, to sound like old people now i don't know right <laughs> forgot what it was i mean nah it's crazy because like our kids they won't know what a floppy disk is yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, stuff like that. Like, they won't know any of that stuff. Yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah, we may sound old, but, and realistically speaking, it was 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? We basically grew up through, like, a technology boom. Like, the booming of technology. Because technology has increased so insane. In such a short so, amount of time. So insane. Mm hmm Like, um... Like, we were just earlier before the podcast. I mean, we know this, but for them, like, we were looking at drones. Yeah, crazy. Bro, they have sensors on drones. I mean, I've been new this, but we were just looking at some updated uh, versions of the ones that I looked at back then. And they have, like, eight sensors on the camera to avoid objects. They have active tracking to track you. Like, I can walk and it will follow me. Uh, 4K cameras that are about the size of like a golf ball. An inch, like it's an inch screen. Yeah, sensor. inch, inch screen. Like you couldn't even imagine that back then. Back then, if you wanted to produce any type of, you know, super high quality videography, you would think you would have to get these big uh, the cinema cam cameras. Quarter, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, cinema camcorders that TV producers and stuff were using and. Like it wasn't it wasn't for the consumer like that stuff wasn't available right um and even back then 4K wasn't even a big thing yet mm -hmm. back then so it was just 1080 was popping then when right. we were growing up 
Um, and that was the thing. And now if you go back and look to what we're using before seven, uh, 10, eight, we're using seven twenty. If you try to watch this YouTube on seven twenty, and then go to ten eighty, like, Holy crap. And mm-hmm. you go to ten eighty to you bump it up to 1440 P or 4k. Like you're like, Whoa, like, right. seriously, I, that's nuts. Right now, the difference is, I mean, just the, the leaps and bounds that technology has made, like I said, in such a short amount of time. It's mind blowing, man. Honestly, like, yeah. In twenty years, we went from like. So I remember, like, the memory cards, uh, for the PlayStation One. They were like, oh yeah, they were the like little, little megabytes, right? Like ten megabyte yeah, memory cards. Yeah, yeah. And Very now, small storage. Now we have games that are sixty gigs, gigabytes. So for those who don't, for layman's terms, for those who don't know the mm-hmm. difference between megabytes, a thousand megabytes is one kilobyte, and a thousand kilobytes is one megabyte. So that's basically 100,000, if I'm not mistaken, megabytes and one gigabyte. So and you, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Or no, 1,000 megabytes equals a gigabyte, gigabit. If you is get 1,000 a a thousand bit megabit, 1,000 megabit internet is mm-hmm. one gigabit ethernet. True. Yeah, I think so. True. You can double check. But even that too, internet, bro, <laughs> like internet. Dial up Especially to internet. Is it right? Especially internet. Uh, wait, what? A thousand megabit equals one gigabit. Yeah, a thousand megabit is one is one gig. One thousand megabytes is one gigabyte. So yeah. So so yeah. It just it just goes to show, man. Like so, a thousand of those memory cards would be the equivalent of one game. Or not not even one game. One gig. So that one game is 60 times that number. So it's just... And on our phones, you start off like basic, like sometimes like 16 or 32. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like just, just the size, like this the iPhone 8 Plus, like just small yeah. little cell phone. Battery. Can, you got like maybe... It's like 128 gigs, I think. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just... 3,000 milliamp battery or something that be in phones and right. all that. I mean... And a small device. And these these are things that some of them have more storage than computers had like 10 years ago. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's insane. And internet. Now you can get fiber, fiber internet. Right. <laughs> you it used get to, one gigabit. And the crazy thing about internet is the, <laughs> the signal used to be over copper wire. So exactly. you know, copper, cat 45 cables, all that stuff. And now, now you got it's cat 5.3. What is it? I just call it cat 5. Cat 5. Well, cat, cat 5, 5 ethernet. there's cat 5 and then there's cat 5.3. Ethernet, which is a standard now, mm-hmm. and then you got Cat Six. I got a Cat Six, but you don't need that. That's for like K- ten gig, ten gigabyte Ethernet or something. I don't. I don't really worry about those. Cause, I mean, really, it's not. It's the, not really because the fiber is. That's where the the crazy speeds come from. Because that's yes. actually glass inside the fiber, and it's light that's traveling and transmitting data, which is yep. insane. I don't know how people come up with these things. I don't it's know. It's nuts. I don't know where it came from, but just the <laughs> the availability now of technology where I just I can click upload and I can have it displayed and broadcasted to people all over the world. You know what I'm saying? And the, at the click of a of a button. You know what I'm saying? Instantaneously. So yeah. it it's just it's insane, man. And in this age of technology that we have, you know, our generation and the generation after us and more to come, obviously, they have a lot of availability for things and a lot of keys to success because just the opportunity and the the potential is out there. You know what I'm saying? To do anything, especially with all the information we have. We have information at our fingertips. We have a, a little handheld computer and a cell phone where I can look up anything that I want to look up and figure it out. I can look up any word, any language. I can learn it. You know what I'm saying? Like this, yeah. the potential for knowledge is is at an all time high. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a good time to be alive, man. And in the sense too, that kind of crutches uh, people in a sense. Because um, if you ever been in a situation where, say, you were in a situation where you couldn't charge your phone and your phone completely died. Mm-hmm. I was just I was listening to a podcast. I forgot which podcast it was. Um, and they were talking about this where. Um, or no, I think it was it was Joe Rogan. and He was talking to like Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, actually saw that. One, you saw yeah. that. And Kevin yeah. Hart was talking about the fact that without the GPS on his phone, how'd you get around back then? You know, even mm. simple as that, you would be like, yeah, if you didn't have your phone, how would you know? Like if you had to go meet somebody at a place or you had to go meet on a street or something, how would you get there without your phone? 
Not to bust out that map. <laughs> you'd either you would have to print out directions mm-hmm. from your computer, or if you didn't have a computer, good old map quest. Nice little map. And do people know how to do that? I mean, right. some do, but do a right. lot of people? Most likely not. If I had right. to make a guess. And that's the thing too is about technology is like having all the answers at your disposable is beautiful because you could you could save less time trying to learn everything, and mm-hmm. when you need to know the facts. You can go to it and, right. you ha- and then you can learn it or have it. But at the same time, the sense of the fact that it's all there kind of like you don't remember phone numbers anymore. But just no, Im- imagine a situation where I was talking about where you lost battery to your phone and you need to call somebody. And you're you say you're traveling somewhere like you just went to a different state. You're traveling. You don't got your phone. How do you mm. call that person? You know? I only, you don't remember their number. Yeah, I only know a select few numbers. Uh, you know, I my, know a couple. Yeah. yeah, I know my own number and like my parents' number. Yeah, and I, know, I, know I know my mom. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's, there's there's only very there's a very few amount of numbers that I actually remember. I know the house phone, but I don't use it. Right, <laughs> and, and house phones honestly are obsolete nowadays too. Like, yeah. I, I they offered to install a, a house phone in my house. I said, Nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I don't need it. Now they kind of add phone. in for free just, right. just so they can right. offer hey, bro, it. Just, like, just take the service, Yeah, man. Just, <laughs> just use, use your it, phone, please. Man. Like, like, just have it there right. and collect the dust. We need it. <laughs> right. So, I, I, I don't know, man. A lot of things are becoming obsolete. I mean, like, mm-hmm. it, just technology has a way of consuming things and making things obsolete. So, like, Blockbuster, for example, ran oh, out of yeah, business yeah. by Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Now you can buy games online. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, GameStop's going to start phasing out. You know, GameStop is on the It is. Now. It is so, already, right? Right. It's already declining. So, I mean, it's just, it's a matter of They've time at this point. lost a couple stores, yeah. Right. So, I mean, <sighs> everything is just becoming obsolete because of technology. So, it's a gift and a curse. You know what I'm saying? Because, obviously, it is. You, you, you lose jobs when you introduce technology to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like, you know, we as a people need to be cognizant of that and take it in stride and, and take it in small quantities don't take on too much at once because it can yeah. cripple the economy you know what i'm saying if it goes too far so and even even uh on a different note too like on a social level i feel like more people need to be conscious of this and definitely with their kids not not saying that i'm te- telling you how to raise your kids but you should at least be aware of it is that like i, I like even like social media in general or text messaging the way people connect now it's cool to be connected to so many people at the same time, mm-hmm. but not having the social skills developing from being around a group of people or even just the face to face of one one person interacting with a person face to face. Like if they're not developing those skills as a young kid, like that can definitely hinder you because your brain's developing when you're young. Right. So if you don't develop those skills or like even then you think social skills are so easy because, you know, you just do it naturally. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can get bad at social skills, even if you were good. If you if like all you do is order groceries online and you stay home all day and only time you go out is just to go to work or say you work at home, too. And like you just at home all day. and You never interact with people. Right. And you do that for quite a bit of time. And then you go to talk to people like you may not be as funny anymore. You're not picking up social cues as good as you did. Like your interaction with people or you like you lose confidence in talking to people. Right. Like all those social skills and stuff. You should be aware of it because there's there's a gift and a curse to that, too. Like absolutely as far as on the social uh, level, too, with yeah. technology. No, that's definitely true, man. That's definitely true. Um. And then, you know, cameras, too. I like cameras, you know, as far as, like, the, oh, the leaps and bounds they make. Because, I mean, just the quality of cameras that they that they can provide to you as the end user is crazy. They're you know giving to you right now. Is why. <laughs> right. Like, they, they record right now. Like, I'm, I'm still <laughs> I'm still in awe of these cameras because, like, you I can know. literally see what you're recording. You can see, you know, from from the main room angle, I can see the, the screen showing me what I'm looking like. I can see the focus. I can see your angle. I can see my angle. You know what I'm saying? I see all these auto things. Autofocus. Yeah, the autofocus. Automated is focus. Snaps. Like, you don't have to do it. Bro, <laughs> instantaneous autofocus in 0.2 seconds. Doing the work for you. Two tenths yeah. of a second. That's insane for yeah. autofocus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, two tenths I, so of a second. Is I, I think these cameras have the fastest autofocus in the world, if I'm not mistaken. That's what Sony was talking about. Cause it might this, be. Because yeah. they have the same sensor that the Sony A9 camera has, which is a, um, That's, a sports camera. Yeah. It's, it's a full body uh mirrorless dslr oh okay but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
it's a it's a sports camera, so it's for fast motion, you know, quick mm-hmm. autofocus, capturing races, stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. So I mean, yeah. it, just the autofocus is insane. So um, I mean, it, the quality is there, man. Especially with cameras, and the the phone cameras too have come a long way as well. Oh, like, man, that, yeah, we didn't even dive into that. There's so much. Yeah, like the phone cameras. <laughs> it's insane because you basically can like, and they have filters that you can put on, like actual like lens filters for your camera. Yeah. That you just snap onto the back and it can upgrade the quality. It can upgrade the zoom. I mean, the accessories too. Yeah, accessories. It's just so. It's just Literally, so much, if we man. wanted to, we would record this podcast on three different phones and we, still have good, pretty good quality. Still, <laughs> like we honestly, could. with cameras nowadays too, and iPhones, Apple's killing that too with the iPhone. Right. They're they they always been really good at cameras, regardless if they're the best or not at cameras. Mm-hmm. They're definitely top up there, easy. So anybody that wants to. Start a podcast. You can do it from your phone. Yeah, you could do any, a lot of things with your phone. I personally would advise against it, but it's, it's yeah, you can it's do not it, easy. You can do whatever you want. It's you not know? easy, but it's ca- you're capable. That's that's the right. biggest deal with it. It's like you got this small thing you carry around to do so much with. You do almost everything with your phone, and then you can also you can, there's so many possibilities. You can make a podcast. You can right. do whatever. And and that's another thing that people don't realize is with all the technology they have all of the creative possibilities they have, all of the innovation that they can do. I think Kevin Hart said it in, in the Joe Rogan podcast when he was talking mm-hmm. to him. He said that people don't realize how valuable they are when they utilize their time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That might not be verbatim, but you get the point of what I'm saying. You don't realize the value that you have and what you can bring to the table and things that you can create if you actually apply yourself and you actually – Push yourself in position to do something constructive. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people yeah. just get stuck at the day to day, nine to five, come mm-hmm. home, watch TV, watch a movie, whatever, go out on the weekend, chase women, or vice versa. There's a there's a monotony to it almost in a sense where you kind of get mm-hmm. stuck in this routine where you don't break out, you don't try new things, you don't explore other options, and and finally find what you're truly passionate about. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't have time to find out what they're passionate about. And I can I can relate to that to an extent. But yeah. I also feel like you can do anything you put your mind to. So it's a matter of what you're willing to sacrifice. Because there has to be a certain level of sacrifice to get something back. So if you're working 10-hour yeah. days, 12-hour days, you know what I'm saying? And you get off work and you're working five days a week, 12-hour days, whatever the case may be. You mm-hmm. have to find time between then. So you're going to have to sacrifice sleep. You're going to have to sacrifice fr- time with friends. You're going to have to sacrifice something to find what you truly like doing and what you're passionate about. And yep. then acting on that is a whole nother thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, that's, it's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? But it, for those that want to make a change and those that want to do something like that, you have options. If you want to start a podcast, you can use phones. You can use little clip-on mics. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can make a podcast for under a hundred dollars outside of you know having cell phones or whatever to to make it you know what i'm saying yeah. there's a will there's a way there's always a budget for everything you know so you, you said something key there that um has helped me grow the biggest in the most biggest way as a person trying new things mm-hmm. and uh thinking outside the box as far as being open to new ideas Ideas that aren't mine, so, you know, listening to people, right? Um, obtaining information, looking. I mean, uh, you know, Eric, you know, had that problem with me playing devil's advocate sometimes, and it's like that's how I think. Like, mm-hmm. I never try to think that I'm always right all the time. I always consider, even if I feel 100 percent right, I always consider if somebody is opposing to what I'm saying, if they're going the opposite or even just a little bit off of what I'm saying. They're mm-hmm. like, nah. You kind of write about that, but this, I listen. I'm like, okay, you might be onto something. Let me know what you had to say and consider it, not just hear it and be like, uh huh, uh huh. Like, really focus. Because people people that develop their minds, develop their perspective, and they grow, those are the people that you see there when people are talking to them, they're listening. And they let you get out your full opinion or your thoughts or concerns or something. Or when somebody's an expert, you know, they're an expert or professional at a certain field. They sit there and listen to them what they have to say. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the biggest thing of trying to find out something you're passionate about or figuring out more about yourself. Like for me, like I went I went hiking on the Appalachian uh, Mountains and mm-hmm. I also went hiking at the Adirondacks, Adirondacks in uh, New York. And 
those those experiences alone, having those experiences, I learned things about myself of how far I can push myself. Mm-hmm. Um, because at that time I was even younger, I was a, I was a lot more fit and you know a lot more active. I was playing basketball, so I thought that I was in really good shape. But then when I was climbing up those mountains, I wasn't trekking with any poles or anything. I was just you know free trekking, and I started to feel stuff in my joints. Mm-hmm. But then. Once I completed that whole thing, I was like, that was hard. But now I realize that I could do more than that. I realize how far I can push myself. Right. Because if, if you think about it, like, uh, I think I hiked like 12 miles or like I've biked like 40 or 80 miles before. Damn. Yeah. But the thing is, when you thought, when I thought about it at first, before I did, I was like, man, that's a lot. Like, I don't know. Like, that's going to be super hard. But right. then you do it or you push yourself. You realize the limits and that's not even just a physical level. You can do that mentally too. If you try new things and you put yourself out there, you can learn so much about yourself, what you're into. You can learn and try to understand other people, understand the world. Like that's, I, I like what you said because that's such a big deal mm-hmm. as far as growing a perspective on who you are, who you want to be and, you know, find out what you're passionate about because like even then, when Kevin Hart talked about that, like you have to be passionate about something first for you to have the drive. Right. Cause nobody wants to just do anything. That's what people are doing nine to five. Maybe I don't know, you can be as low as like working at McDonald's or something like that. I'm not trying to discredit it. It's a stand up job. You're making money, you're paying bills, but most people don't want to do that. They're just doing it just to make a paycheck. Mm-hmm. But, but let's, let's not forget the intent of those jobs as well, though. It's for, mm-hmm you know, the high school students is for yeah, the, younger the college kids. students between classes, not meant to be a living wage and or career. Yeah. Unless you're going for like, you know, management and ownership and stuff like that. That's a different spectrum of the fast food market. And but, you could, you know, yeah. And you could go down that route. Right. But not continue. Um, but the thing is you're doing that only because you may need to pay bills or whatever. You're your younger kid or something like that. They're trying right. to do that. But just imagine what you can do. Like, I mean, it's it's not out of this world. There's a lot of crazy things. But say you were super passionate about being the best cashier or the best. Or say you wanted to be a manager. Or you wanted to work at McDonald's. I'm just using it as a reference. Like, right. if you were passionate about it, just imagine how good you would be at that job. Like, when you're doing it just for a paycheck and when you're passionate about something to drive for you to be good, like... Once you get passionate about something, then that's where the drive comes from. That's when you can find ways. Like if you if you had a lot of kids or something, you didn't have a lot of time. If you found something you were passionate about, you would try to do the best you could to make time for it. Right. But if it was just something you had to do to make money, you would probably you may make excuses or you'd be like, "Man, I'll, I'll get to it eventually." Mm-hmm. But if you wanted to do it, really wanted, you would find a way. Right. You would find some time out of your day to try to figure out how to do this. Oh, that's facts. And um. Yeah. You, you said that earlier when you know you sit down and you listen to people. That's that's the important thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize that there's a difference between hearing somebody and listening to somebody. Yep. Because I can hear you all day, but that does not mean I'm receiving what you're saying. If I'm actually listening to what you're saying, I'm trying to that, understand and trying to understand it. That's a mm-hmm. whole different level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what a lot of people miss out on. That's what a lot of people don't realize is to actually listen and not just hear. You know what I'm saying? Because I can hear somebody out all day. But if I'm not listening to what they're saying, there's going to be no progression of the conversation. There's going to be no progression of me as a person. There's going to be no progression of my understanding. You know, it's going to stay stagnant if I don't listen and take other things in because yeah. no one person is going to have all the answers. And no one person is going to know everything. So to sit down and listen exactly. to other people from different walks of life, from different lifestyles, from different uh, preferences, you know, even gay, like if you listen to gay people, like Gay people have a lot of knowledge, you know what I'm saying, yeah. about things that you might not have knowledge about. So if you just take all that knowledge in and listen to people, and it'll make you a better person at the end of the day, you know? So. Yeah, it's not about being right. It's about growing as a person. Right, like, exactly. Yeah, you could be right all you want, but, even, I mean, nobody knows everything. But you yeah. could be right all you want, but it doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean you know everything. Right. right? It, doesn't, it doesn't mean just because you're right about this subject that you're smarter. Mm. You know, you just did more research and that was what interested you. And that's what you chose to put your time and effort into. You know what I'm saying? Whereas I chose to do it somewhere else. If we were to have a conversation about this specific thing, 
I would know more about it than you would because I chose yeah. to put more time and energy and research into that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's and then all, every, it's all everybody you. thinks they're right about everything. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you good. But everybody thinks like even science, something that you consider as objective, science changes. We find out we have facts about science back then that now have changed and evolved. And it's like, oh, we thought this, but now it actually is this. We've uncovered that now these are the facts about science. Right. You know, and there's certain things that don't change, like gravity or something like that. That's very objective. Mm -hmm. But even then, you may find out more about gravity that we didn't know. And it's like, okay, you thought you were right. But now there's more information that you got by listening or observing or research or whatever you did. And now you got more information to be even more correct or not about being correct, but you have more knowledge on that subject or that right. that topic or you have more understanding. And I mean, yeah, that's that's a key problem that some people have, too. You're right. I mean, definitely social media, too. You know, yeah. I always I bring up social media a lot. I sound like an old man, but uh. <laughs> But not. Nah, I just I I have some issues with it because I feel like people aren't doing the due diligence to grow as people, mm -hmm. or maybe they don't have the tools to figure that out. No, and like th those are key factors. What we just talked about just now. Those are key factors in growing right. as a person and, and understanding. And, and, and some of them don't care to grow. Some of them are, yeah, are, are comfortable where they are. Some of them are complacent, and they're like, you know what? I think I have everything I need in life as far as my growth and development is concerned. Which you know. It's an ignorant mindset, honestly, because if yeah. you think about it, you're always growing, you're always changing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the 20 year old you is different from 12 year old you, and 30 yeah. year old you is going to be way different than 20 year old you. You know what I'm saying? Like, every yeah. every decade of your life will be a new chapter. You'll always learn new things, you'll develop. Well, I would hope you would learn new things within 10 years, but mm -hmm. everybody's always changing, everybody's always developing, everybody's always moving forward in some way shape or form you know what i'm saying so yeah. there i don't know there's really no excuse to not learn and to not grow you know what i'm saying because not everybody knows everything like we've been harping on this whole time yeah. but there's people that do think they know everything there's people that do think that there's nothing more that they can learn about a specific subject and you can always learn more like when you're talking about you know mention gravity well, yes we mm -hmm. know about gravity conceptually but you know, how do we prove there's gravity? We can pick something up and drop it. You know what I'm saying? But what more is there to gravity? What's the equation of gravity? How, you know, if you do your research and you actually put the time in, you can delve deeper into it and find out way more about it than you ever knew. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we know what gravity is conceptually, but we don't know it on a scientific slash physical level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So majority of people, at least. So, I mean, you, you can always learn more stuff, you know? So, but yeah. Um, Let's talk about uh. Did you did you have something you trying to add? Or? Oh no, what were you about to say? I'm curious now. I was just switching uh switching gears, going yeah, to, uh, switching to talking about NBA. All right, let's do it. Let's do okay, it. so uh, last night, uh, Wednesday was the end of an era. So Dirk Nowitzki and yeah. Dwayne Wade played their last uh NBA games. Uh, their seasons have now or careers have now come to a, a conclusion. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely. Phenomenal careers from both ends of, of the spectrums, you know, from from Nowitzki to Dwayne Wade. I mean, Easy. phenomenal players. I mean, phenomenal two guard or is, is Dwayne two or is he two? He's a two guard. Two guard. Okay, yeah. So phenomenal yeah. two guard, one of the best that we've ever seen. And then you know, Dirk Nowitzki, he's a what power forward, right? I think so. Yeah, he's not a center. Though. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. definitely not. Nah, yeah, I mean, he's, he's got the height forward. of a center, so. <laughs> How many rings does Dirk have? I think he has one. One, right? Yeah. That's all I remember. I, I, yeah. The only one I remember him getting was when they beat Miami. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just one. And Wade has three. Wade has three. It's yeah. ironic, though, that they both, you know, retired in the same year, and they won championships against each other. Mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. But, yeah, man, I mean, it, it's crazy, man. I so, remember when Dirk came out. And way too like, yeah. or at least as far as me growing up, like I remember them really popping on the scene. Mm -hmm. Like seeing Dirk, somebody being that tall with three point jumper and stuff like that, shooting the way he was. His like, fadeaway was nasty. I know, right? Unguardable, man. Real nasty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Unguardable. And then Dwayne Wade, just his athleticism, man, was Shh, insane. Yeah. His athleticism was crazy. I mean, he he was a very electric and dynamic player. You know, what I'm saying he really got you involved in the game and really got you excited to watch. Good basketball, you know what I'm saying? Definitely doesn't matter. Prime. Doesn't matter whose team you were rooting for, you always appreciate watching Dwayne Wade play. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So 
Like mm-hmm. watching it's watching crazy. Wade in his prime was like watching D Rose in his prime. Yeah. Like he had that type of explosive. Yeah. I feel like maybe 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 D Rose was a little bit more um like acrobatic in the air in a sense. I would say like it was, was more impressive from him because of his height difference. Yeah. You know? But he had the the way he had that explosiveness. Right. He finished. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. his prime for sure. He still finishes, but yeah. For yeah. sure. No, I mean, honestly, I feel like you could get another two, three years out of him. But you could, but you know, that's that's his choice, and that's his. You could got out of Kobe you know too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That's yeah. true. But you know, every 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 player, you know, has that decision to make. They have their own choices to make, um, and yep. and ultimately, you know, whether we like it or not, they they're a person first, a player second. You know what I'm saying? So they always yeah. have their personal purposes of what they want to do, and they have their own aspirations and ambitions to to pursue. So, I mean, the best we can do as fans is just appreciate them, uh, appreciate the time that they gave us as far as, like, the entertainment and, then, you know, let them move on into the next chapter of their life. Yeah, man. But phenomenal careers on both ends. Um, definitely going to miss them and watching them play. But yeah. uh, on, on to the next. I mean, we still have a lot of great stuff coming down the pipeline. Playoffs is uh, Saturday, I think, is when they start. Mm-hmm. So in the, I think so. I'm, yeah. I'm not even exactly. in the Western Conference, we got Golden State in the first seed. We got the Nuggets in the second seed. We have Portland in the third seed. Okay. Fourth seed is Houston Rockets. Yeah. Fifth seed is Utah Jazz. Sixth seed is uh, the Spurs. No. Is it? OKC. I'm sorry. Sixth seed is OKC. Oh, okay. Yeah, Seventh okay. seed is the Spurs. And then eighth seed is uh, the Clippers. Clippers, so, yeah. Okay. What are your what are your predictions for the first round of the playoffs? Who's who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? Yeah, so first round. Or who's gonna have, win in that? Who's who's gonna win in the first round in the West? So we have Golden State against the Clippers. I'm just gonna I'm gonna say Golden State. I think <laughs> that's, that's like a, <laughs> I have to say anything. <laughs> I think that's Is a that given. One? Like I think that's a given. That's um, too obvious. I mean, damn, that would be the upset of the history of basketball right there. That would be insane. That would be nuts. I'd be, mean, go Clippers. <laughs> nah, I'd be pissed. <laughs> Everybody would be I'd pissed. I'd be pissed. But how? <laughs> so, so, Golden State is definitely the favorite for that round. Um, so, next we have the Denver Nuggets Denver? against the, uh, the Spurs. Spurs. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Nuggets. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, I, I got to. I'm gonna go. They've to been doing just, really good too. The yeah. Spurs are too sporadic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're they're not consistent enough to to keep up with the Nuggets because the Nuggets have that offensive capability and they do. The Spurs they have good defensive pieces, but they do. their defense is not enough for That's what, what they have to deal with against the Nuggets. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah. And their depth isn't all that great either. So, but yeah. they're a very young team, so they still have room for growth and development. Definitely developing, for and sure. they'll get better in the coming years, especially with Demar leading them. But this year ain't it, man. Nuggets. I'm gonna give it to the Nuggets. Nuggets, yeah, I agree. So next, I was round, about to lean towards the Spurs, but I was like, yeah, yeah, they're not who they used to be, man. If they had Kawhi, I would definitely give it to the Spurs. But yeah, easy. Nah, that's that's that ship is sailed. So next, we have the Portland Trailblazers mm-hmm. against. Uh, Oklahoma City. I'm gonna go with OKC. O- OKC, yeah, I was exactly what I was about to say. The reason why I'm going with OKC it's still a good matchup. Definitely a good matchup, but the reason why I'm going with OKC is because they just they they're missing Pieces. Nurkic. So Nurkic had broken his leg. He mm-hmm. had a compound fracture on his leg. So I heard about that. Yeah. yeah, bad injury. So he's done for the season. He won't be back until I I would say probably mid next season. Honestly. Due to how late he got the injury, but it's definitely still an important piece. Yeah, Nurkic is out. I think CJ McCollum is still out. So you're oh, okay. you're relying now on Damian Lillard and possibly Seth Curry. And Seth Curry is a great player, but he still needs time to develop and to grow. You know what I'm saying? Agree. He doesn't have all those pieces that he would need. You know, he's not Steph. You know what I'm saying? So he can't just take over like that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I, I'm just gonna give it to OKC because they 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 out they will outgun Portland. Unfortunately. Now, well, what I will say about that matchup, unlike like a Golden State versus Clippers, that's an obvious win, and I would never see that being an upset. Um, be mm. hella surprising though. But this one, this one, they could they could pull a win. They could. It's possible. 
That's all I'm saying. I would still think OKC, but definitely, definitely positive. Hold on, I think I think Portland. Portland will get a game. I think they'll get a game. I don't think yeah. it'll be a sweep. I think it'll be a, a five game series, definitely between Portland and OKC. It just it wouldn't be super crazy to think that Portland could win that. It wouldn't be super crazy. We'll see. I mean, they yeah, had. Yeah, uh, that's so, what I'm saying. You never know. So they played the Kings uh, last night, and. Mm-hmm. What was the score? A. Simmons scored 30, 37 points. Ooh. So, I mean, they have some hidden talent on their team that people might not know about. Uh, Maybe. Some people show up on play. LaBissiere, Le, whoever that is. I don't a, know. He's a forward, but he, <laughs> no he scored 29 points. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The vibe was against the Kings. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But th- they have some hidden talent. So, I don't know, man. They might they might be able – they might do it. They might shock – the world. We'll see. It's possible, but I go OKC. Uh, yeah, I definitely go OKC for this one. Mm-hmm. And then next we have Houston Rockets against Utah Jazz. Yeah. So for this one, I'm I'm about to go with Houston. Houston. I mean, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, they they just been playing too good. They've been too consistent on offense to to lose to to Utah. I mean, Utah's a great defensive team, mm-hmm. but offense. On the Houston side, is just is, they're still going to be much. putting up points no matter how much defense. Yeah, it's, <laughs> they're they're, they're their offense points. is too crazy, man. They're like racking up points. Man. There's no way. There's no way that they're going to be able to get the defensive stops they need against these guys. I mean, yeah, fucking Harden. You're going to have to right. You're going to have to lock down Harden, <laughs> and that's very difficult to do. Yeah, especially with him having refs favor. You know what I'm saying? Like his fucking erratic moves <laughs> like yeah you know, no that shit is ridiculous it's, it's crazy so I, I definitely give that that serious to Houston yeah I, get I, it I still I still have Golden State coming out of the west but um okay yeah yeah the the Golden State doesn't have the ideal matchup right now because in the second round should uh Houston win which they probably will Golden State will have to play Houston in the second round and in the semifinals they play whoever wins between um Peace. You know, OKC and or the Nuggets. Cause oh, probably, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll probably be OKC and the Nuggets in the second round. So, I would probably yeah. say the Nuggets will probably be OKC. Who knows, though? We might get shocked and OKC might beat the Nuggets. Because, I mean, again, OKC is another very, very inconsistent team where they have nights where they're shooting lights out and they have nights where they're just kind of in a slump. You know, both on Russell Westbrook's end and on – uh, Paul George is in, you know. And since it's, it's playoffs, we're not talking season game. It's definitely possible they could show up. They could show up for that. Right, exactly. So that's I never I never put it past them in the playoffs. Sometimes. Yeah, that's how that's how I envision the Western Conference. So in the Eastern Conference, we have the oh, Bucks yeah. in the first seed. We have Toronto Raptors in the second seed. Seventy mm-hmm. Sixers are third seed. Yep, I know. Boston Celtics are fourth seed. Uh, Indiana Pacers, the fifth seed. Uh, you have the Brooklyn Nets. Surprise, surprise, uh, in the sixth that. seed. First time in the playoffs in a long time. Okay. I don't know the specific time frame, but this is their first time in the playoffs in, in a minute. Long, long time, yeah. Yeah, and then we have uh, Orlando Magic at the seventh seed, and then we have... Jason Kidd would be proud, though. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the Detroit Pistons in the eighth seed. All so. Right. Man, first the East, round, <laughs> the East. First round is the Bucks against the Pistons. The Bucks. Bucks. There should be no question about yeah, this. Yeah, Bucks. They. I don't just have been, to decide on that. Right. They're they're too they're too big. You know what I'm saying? They're they're very versatile on defense and on offense. Or is the they're East? Good. Right. Bucks killing it. I I think the Bucks have the East on lock. Honestly, I mean they they have a lot of good pieces and they're a great two way team. You know what I'm Golden saying? Golden State Bucks. I, that's that's kind of what I'm leaning towards, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. It'd be yeah. an interesting series to see, and it's good to break that monotony of of the Golden State Cavaliers. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's good to see something different, right? Though. Even right. though it's still Golden State, <laughs> it's right? Like, that didn't change, right? Exactly, still... exactly. But I mean, <laughs> that's the constant. Right? I mean, who, who? How can you? How can you blame them? I mean, you picked up DeMarcus Cousins in addition to a team that was already projected to win. Bro. Now you add DeMarcus Cousins, Katie still <laughs> arguably the best center in the league. You know what I'm saying? What if KD leave? Uh, if KD leave, so so the way I see it is, if KD does leave, I think that Golden State will pitch to keep the Marcus Cousins. They'll pitch him a, a contract to stay. Uh huh. Um. Now, if we do keep KD, I think that possibly Draymond might leave because yeah, I because because you want to keep you ideally you'd want to keep 
Kevin Durant and you'd want to keep Klay Thompson. Steph's already a lock until like 2020, I think. So is he really 2021? Yeah, because he signed a uh, that that big contract. It was like for two two hundred and something million for for like ten for five years. I think. Five years, four or five, four or five. Okay, yeah. And this is back in 20, 2018. 20, yeah. 2017, 2018 season. It's one of those years. Something like that. Anyway, I don't remember those. He, he's on like lock that, for, yeah. for the for the foreseeable future. You know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah, he's cool. He's probably going to play in Golden State he's for his entire career. State, he's, yeah, he, yeah he, he makes the Golden State Warriors. It so makes sense for him to stay. Right, so he's going to stay. So obviously you got Steph on lock. Ideally, you would want to keep Clay Thompson with him. You want to keep the Splash right. Brothers together. And then... You know, the icing on the cake will be Kevin Durant. But, you know, obviously, we don't know what Kevin Durant's intentions are. There's talks. You know, he's kind of, you know, wishy-washy with it. So, if they win, I, I, I could see him leaving. I'd say there's probably a 50% chance of him leaving. You see so. KD going to the Knicks? I don't know. Because, look, man. I don't know either. So, I heard reports of them saying, like, oh, yeah, it's a given. That's, that's going to happen. It's a lock. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, bro, every time KD saw the Knicks promoting and trying to get him, he's like, I don't know why they're trying to recruit me. Like, he would get pissed off every time. He's like, I'm not trying to go to the Knicks. Like, I don't care about them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But they're talking about trying to get Kyrie and him to the Knicks. I'm like, look, oh, yeah, yeah, even if too. y'all do that, I still don't see them coming out of the East, honestly. Yeah. I, I, I would say they would maybe be like fourth seed. You know what I'm saying? Maybe third. But, I mean, with the Bucks mm-hmm. and the way they're playing – if they bring this into the next year, and if they're able, them, yeah. even if they're able to, if they're able to get a better uh, pick, you know what I'm saying? They're able to get another superstar around Giannis, then nobody's messing with them in the East. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Giannis is the new LeBron in the East. He's the king of the East now. Now yep. that LeBron has left, that's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. So Become too, too much, too easier. Yeah, uh, he's for, too, he's too unstoppable, man. Like you cannot stop him in the paint. Like it's very difficult. Yep. So, but. So, yeah, Bucks are definitely going to win that first game. So, next game is going to be the Toronto Raptors against Orlando Magic. Toronto. Mm. I'm going with Toronto. There's no question about it. Orlando does not have the firepower nor the defensive capability to stop uh, yeah, Toronto. I guess. At all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you... <sighs> I tr- You know, that time I actually specifically tried to play devil's advocate, but I can't. Because, I mean, you got... I tried to go for Orlando. Your, your I can't best, your, best, your best player in Orlando is arguably Gordon. Gordon. And he's not... He's not dynamic enough. He's not, he's not enough. potent enough. It's not enough at all. To be able to do something to Toronto by himself. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean... Yeah, that's, that's Toronto. East, East is so weird right now. But the East... So, with the West, it's not uncharacteristic to see a lower... C team beat a higher C team in the first round mm-hmm. because they're all good teams in the West. Every team is pretty well rounded. Like the playoff race is very close in the West between the bottom four seeds. You know what I'm saying? And even in the top four seeds, honestly, like the, the difference between games is like maybe three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas in the East, the difference is dramatic. You know what I'm saying? Like in the East, <sighs> that's the why Bucks, I couldn't even go for Orlando. The Bucks had 60 wins. The Raptors had 58. The Sixers had 51. There's only three teams that had above 50 wins in the East. You know what I'm saying? And the rest are just... Opposed to the West, yeah. which the top five seeds had above 50 and above wins. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, it, the East and West is so divided right now. It's not even... Right. So, I, I'm going to give the second round to... I mean, first round to Toronto. Um, yeah. So, next mm-hmm. we have Philly against the Nets. So... This one is more of a blockbuster one where I could see it going either way because the Nets have a lot of talent and all the young talent. I hear you, go but ahead, go ahead. I mean, just the way that the Nets are playing, man, they are playing very good basketball on the offensive side of the house. I get it. But this is where Philly has an edge on the defensive end. You know what I'm saying? You have a phenomenal mm-hmm. defender in Joel Embiid, you know, a good rim protector. You also have a good defender in Jimmy Butler. You have a good defender in Ben Simmons. You know what I'm saying? So they have good defensive pieces um, to prevent them from, you know, outscoring them. So mm-hmm. they, they play. Worry. Kevin Hart, Meek Mill, I got your back. <laughs> Philly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give the edge to Philly, 
but I would not be surprised if it could, it if could Brooklyn happen. if Brooklyn get not maybe not beat them, but I would be I would not be surprised. They could take some games if they made it like a six or seven game series. Yeah, I could see that definitely. Okay, okay. so we'll we'll get the edge of Philly for this one. Yeah, yeah. Next, we have the Boston Celtics against the Indiana Pacers. Uh huh. That's the last one, isn't it? That's the last one in the first round. So okay. I'm gonna give this one to Boston. Because the play, Pacers the versus Pacers, Boston, yeah. The Pacers are still without their best player, which is uh Oladipo. Um and everybody that remembers Oladipo, he's the guy that played on OKC. Mm-hmm. Kind of mediocre. And then once he got to the Pacers, he upped his level of play a whole lot because he now good, yeah. he had to be that that score for them. He had to be that leader. So he developed as a player. And in my he opinion, he's one of the most he did pick up Yeah, he's one of the most improved players in the league, in my opinion. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know, them being without him is going to hurt them a lot. So, I would say Boston got, has the edge on this one. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I'm mad that the East is kind of too easy to decide like that. Yeah, no, it's very. It's, it's too easy to decide. Yeah. It's. Not it's to disgusting. discredit them, but damn, man. I just, it's kind of disappointing. I, I hope the NBA evolves a lot more as far as on both conferences. Because, uh, I mean, it's okay to have. A conference that's kind of a lot more dominant, right. but like, I don't like to see it at this level. It's not the worst, but I just I rather see it a lot more competitive on both sides. No, I feel that definitely. Because when you put, okay, so we talked about maybe it's gonna be Bucks and Golden State. and Golden State, right? I mean, it's not impossible, right? But it's even, not impossible. I'm not even a Golden State fan. It's not impossible, but Golden State, that's yeah. what I'm picking. That's what I'm picking. Yeah, because I mean. It wasn't that, and, like, my decision right there wasn't even, like, it wasn't even a close one. It wasn't even, I had to think about it too much. I'm I, would, I would say I the Bucks would get one game max what, um, against Golden State. Oh, Bucks getting one? Against Golden State. I would say they get one game max. <sighs> Yeah, I, that's not even far off at all. Yeah. Because, I mean. Why not? Yeah. Barring injury, of course. You know what I'm saying? But. I could see Golden State. I think Golden State will sweep Clippers. I think the Golden State Warriors will, you know, beat Houston in five. Yeah. Because I don't, I, I do not see Houston winning a series against Golden State because Houston is weaker than they were last year, and Golden State added more offense slash defense to their team and Demarcus Cousins and with Andrew Bogut. We got Andrew Bogut back, bro. Oh, like I the, know. the one that was on the seventy three and nine Warriors team, the yeah. defensive, you know, monster. Like the the, like he, his picks, like the pick and roll with Andrew Bogut is is deadly, and we haven't seen it too much since he's come back. But best believe Steve Kerr has it in his playbook to roll out the Steph Curry pick and roll with Andrew Bogut. I guarantee it, mm-hmm. and the Steph Curry pick and roll with Demarcus Cousins because Demarcus Cousins and Andrew Bogut both are brick walls. Like you. You're not getting around them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or you're yeah, not yeah. getting through them, I should say. You can get around them. You can't get through them, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And by the I time you get that. around them, Steph's already got the three up in the air. It's probably going in. You know? yeah, so, uh, I don't know, man. They're just they're just too dominant. And a, a question, too, is uh, out of both conferences all together, mm-hmm. including the finals, what game is going to be the best game to watch for you? Going to Saint Houston. Yeah, it's like, why is that so easy though? Because because they're why the, can you decide that so quick? Like that's because, how that's how dumb it is. Because we we saw what happened to Golden State <laughs> against the Nuggets. I mean, Golden State is you know I think three no two and one against the Nuggets for their series. Golden State. E, as far as they lost is concerned, one, yeah. they lost one of the Nuggets and then they blew yeah. them out the other two games. Yep. By. A, a terrible margin, like it was bad. Was it both of them? So the so the second one, the second loss that the Nuggets had wasn't as bad because Steve Kerr took all the starters out like nine minutes into the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So they were able to catch up a little bit. I think the final score was like one twenty something to one fourteen. Yeah, but they still beat them by ten. You know what I'm saying? Whereas they were down by thirty when they took yeah, all the starters that one. out. That so I mean one. that if they would have kept the starters in the whole time. This would have been a it would have been embarrassment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They didn't like, necessarily need to. Yeah, yeah, like like Nikolai Jokic is he can't hold a candle to Demarcus Cousins. Demarcus Cousins defeats him in offense and defense. Like so that yeah. and that was demonstrated very 
very thoroughly that last game that they played. So yeah, um, I don't think that would be a, a – I, I could honestly see them getting swept in a series against Golden State, honestly. Mm-hmm. Give them one game to be generous. Yeah. I think Houston would go five, maybe six games. Maybe. That's yeah. a, that's a big maybe. And that's why it's the better it's the better one to watch for me right. out of the whole out of the whole finals. Like that's that's the one I'm be I'm definitely gonna be looking for for the most. Right. But I, I do I'm gonna hope, catch a couple games, but I, yeah. I do hope the Bucks go all the way to the finals though. It'd be it'd yeah. be nice to see the young guys get a shot at the championship and get that that finals experience, you know what I'm saying? I'll say I hope they do pull more than one game. Yeah. It'd make it, it interesting. It would, it would make it, it interesting, it, definitely. It's just even for the NBA as a whole, like when you watch that last finals game, like you don't want it to be a blowout. Right. You don't. I mean, <laughs> like when the Cavs got swept. I mean, because. Yeah, you just. Everybody knows they it's had It's not no even fun there, to man. see. Definitely when you're talking about a team like Golden State that's already, you know, dominating as a visual factor when you see all the components, all the players that they have. Mm-hmm. It's already devastating looking at that versus all the other teams. But then. Having a finals match where it's not even it's not even going up to par, like it's not even lasting. It's just it's too easy in a finals finals match, right? Like that's it's just that's not what you would want to see. It's I mean, honestly, it's realistic. Like you know, Golden State's a really great team, really great, and uh, yeah, I just I, I I if anything, I don't think they would win, but I would hope that at least Bucks would pull out a couple games. Two right. games would be nice. Three, oh, <laughs> what? Hey man, but not nah, if two, yeah, <laughs> two. I, that would be nice though, too. Yeah, definitely. So those are, those are our playoff projections, um, and, yeah. and and how we think they're gonna go. So let us know what y'all think in the comments. Um, if y'all listen to this, then I don't know. Find yeah. me on social media. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hear no comments about what you think about Dwayne Wade's kid. It's like I'm playing. <laughs> Let's say positive, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because, I mean, really, there's nothing to gain from negative ones. I mean, you, you either feel how you feel. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's their life. Who cares? Right. It's not yours. Live yours. Yeah, it's not there here nor there, though. But I think uh, this is a, a, a nice, constructive discussion for this episode. Um, yeah. It was, it was over an hour for your liking. So, hey, yeah. That's what I'm talking I know about. You get a little upset when it's under an hour. Y'all be doing so. those pity little, y'all be doing like 30 minutes almost. It'd be like 35, mm-hmm. 39. Or something. No, it's always over 40. Uh huh, whatever. It's always over 40. <laughs> Take off the intro, it'd be like 30. The intro, the intro like is 15 seconds. Nah, I don't know. Y'all be, y'all be slacking. No, the intro is 15 seconds. I, I edited it, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not to compare all the other podcasts, but they be doing like two hours. Mm-hmm. Who? Easy, even like oh, Joe other, Rogan, oh. Joe Budden, I mean, flagrant, brilliant idiots. I mean, that's the ones I mainly watch. But I, feel I like watch other little, ones too. I feel like it's a little long winded, though. I mean, that's it's very difficult for people to maintain attention spans of something for f- two hours, three hours. You know, that's what I'm true. Saying? But like, if it's good conversation, like that's why I get caught up in some of the podcasts that I watch. Because mm-hmm. if you have a really good conversation. I, I watch, like I'm, I'm invested in it. I like this conversation. But like, you I, listen to it. You're not watching the video, right? Yeah, that's true too. But so we all we all listenable. We were on Spotify, right, no, we're, no, on, definitely, definitely. we're on those platforms. That's that's the difference I'm talking about though, as far as Depends. like the the visual portion, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I agree then. You can't really close YouTube out and go about your day and still listen, you know, you have to, unless you have like premium or whatever. You can get premium and just listen to audio. But yeah. it, it really depends on the type of person you are. I mean Hey man, we need to get sponsors, bro. Oh we who who would you want to be a sponsor? That's <laughs> a good know, question. Right? I don't know. I'll Y'all can put that in the comments point. too. But who would I, you? I would take anybody at this point, man. You know, if Road shout out to Road um, Audio, if they if they would sponsor <laughs> us, you know that'd be dope. You trying to get equipment? <laughs> you trying to nah, get equipment? I'm, look, all I'm saying, man. All all of hey, our. Hey, Samsung. Equipment. You know, Samsung. If you want to throw in a um, you know, wallpaper TV. You know, little super oh thin God. one. Nah, we would I'm, have that on the wall so we can only put thing our I'm logo up there, is, man. Is all the audio equipment is road, you know what I'm saying? Word, so this is coincidence, huh? It w- it would be nice if they sponsored us, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I would I would be I would like that. Uh, you know, I did put Sprite. money in your pockets, road. That would be nice. Yeah. Maybe Sprite. You know. Sprite. 
This message has been brought to you by Sprite. Oh, Come no. on, bro. That'd be dope. <laughs> about I, can, do? I can read the little spiel. Might do a little Yachty commercial. <laughs> nah, I can just put the spiel in the beginning. Be like, you know, go get you, go to the store, get you a nice crisp Sprite. This message has been brought to you by Sprite, by the way. You know, just something nice like that. Nah, you know me. I do Dasani. So. I would, I would Water. even, I would even like to be sponsored by, like, hey man, maybe Ooh. Blue Chew. Hey, <laughs> you know, I would do that. Yeah, I would do man. it. I would try it one time. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I would try it one time, maybe. One if time. anything, if anything, just because of what I heard. For those who don't know, Blue Chew is a sexual enhancement. Uh, <laughs> was it? Is it literally like a chew? Like you just chew it's, it? Yeah, you chew pill? it. It's like like gum or something like that. Yeah, like or not gum, just it's edible or whatever. Interesting. Yeah, but that's why it's called Blue Chew, cause yeah, Blue Chew. chew it. Fuck with us, man. Give us a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Give us your clientele. We'll, we'll promote y'all. But yeah, uh, you got anything else you want to add, bro? Um, get those sponsors, man. That's all. I'm glad to be back, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna stay this way. Promise. I said promise. All right, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, man. We'll see. You already find know. A, I'm a, find if, a sleep is hard sometimes. If, if, if you're not here, I'm going to record regardless. So you already know. All right, cool. Just don't change <laughs> the dates on me, though. What you mean? Don't be like Thursday. Oh, never mind. No, Friday. Oh, no. I'll let you know ahead of time. You know that be happening, too. You, the be, only time, you the be, only be pulling time that, that happens, off. Nah, the only time that happens is if, like, multiple people are like, yeah, I can't make it. Then I'm like, all right, well, let's push it back a day then to when y'all can. But. I can make it. Excellent. That's all I do here. I'm sure the people <laughs> love to hear that too. You got anything else to add? Nah, man. I'm I'm good. I'm all I'm all spent up. I gotta work tomorrow, so I'm gonna try and get some sleep here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good, dude. I'm, I'm all. All right, dope. All right, well, <laughs> hey, appreciate everybody listening. Appreciate yeah. everybody's tuning in on all those streaming platforms. Um, Hope you enjoyed the conversation. You missed this, but giveaway details will be released tomorrow. As far as who won the giveaway, uh, tomorrow being Friday. What uh, giveaway? What, which one is it? Uh, I'm giving away an Amazon Echo, the tower. Oh, the oh the tower. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm giving away one of those. So, um, I'll announce the winner tomorrow, being Friday, April twelfth. Twelfth. Okay. Yep. Friday, April twelfth. I will be releasing the winner, and that will be shipped to y'all, and hopefully they are on Sunday. So, appreciate y'all for listening. And seven five junction is out. Peace.